we have to do something. We gotta trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. We gotta lead not to our own understanding, acknowledging Him, knowing that He will direct our path. But that's something that we have to do.
Heavenly Father, we glorify and thank you for this opportunity to stand before your people, dear God. I pray to Heavenly Father that you would uh, just speak through me so that your people will be encouraged to Heavenly Father. I pray that you, the word would be uh, helpful, be enlightening, and uplift us to Heavenly Father. That we would know to Heavenly Father that you are a good God. That you stand with us, stand before us, dear God. Help us to trust in you, to lean in you, on you, dear God. I pray to Heavenly Father that as we hear the word, that it would penetrate our hearts to Heavenly Father so that we can emerge to Heavenly Father better and not bitter. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 The title of today's message is Acknowledge the Lord. Okay. Acknowledge the Lord. It's a continuation from the message we did a couple weeks ago. Uh, we talked about trusting the Lord. Um, for a lot of people, trusting God is it, it is one of the more challenging aspects of our Christian journey. Just just trusting Him, knowing what He wants us to do, and then trusting Him to 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 do what He said that He would do. There, there, there are so many different reasons for us having uh, just trouble trusting God. But here, here are a few things that, that happen in our lives that make it difficult for us to, to trust God. Uh, first, we have fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of failure. Fear of rejection. And that's just to name a few things, you know, the, the, the fear could... could uh, cloud our, our, our judgment, it can cause us to, to not trust in, in, in God. Uh, fear prevents us, it prevents many people from trusting. It's no wonder that the, the Bible, over and over again, we read as, as the angel of the Lord uh, showed up, or even with Jesus, when he was walking on the water, the first thing that he said was, do not fear, right? Mm -hmm. Because we, 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 we have fear in our hearts a lot of times. And, and fear, I've said this many times, fear paralyzes us. It stops us from, from going forward um, and, and, and trusting God and doing what He uh, wants us to do. Worry. Worry stops us from trusting God. And we worry about everything. We worry about everything. We worry about uh, things that, that, that things are going to fall apart. We worry that we're going to fall apart. We worry that that uh, we're not good enough, or we worry that that somebody's going to uh, not come through on what they said. We we just worry about everything. We worry that we can't pay this bill. We worry about this. We worry about that. Worry uh, is is uh, one of the things that stops us from trusting in God. Uh, another thing that stops us from trusting in God as we should is a limited or distorted view of God. And that can cause us to, to not trust in him, not lean on him and depend on him. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in a, in a, in a second. We'll come back to that one. Another thing that, that, that stops us from trusting, and this is God or this is just trusting in general, uh, past betrayals and past disappointments create a lack of trust in our lives. Somebody hurts us, does something uh, bad to us, we find it difficult to trust. Or if you depended on somebody, and, and, and we all depend on God for one thing or another. And if we think that he didn't, he didn't make a way like we thought that he should, guess what that produces in you if you're not careful? That produces in you a, a, a sense of betrayal, a sense of disappointment. And then so when the next thing comes... The next test comes, the next opportunity for you to trust him comes, guess what you don't do? You don't trust him. Because you, the enemy has planted in our minds that if he didn't make a way, you know, that time, you know, the, the time you were going through this particular situation, if he didn't work it out like you thought that he would in, in your past life, then he's not going to work it out in your present situation. So, so uh, past betrayals, past disappointment, that, that, that creates a, a lack of trust. Impatience impedes our ability to trust. 
Simply put, we don't want to wait. We don't want to wait. And so when, when if, if, if God is saying to you that, hey, you need, you need to wait, you know, we, we, don't, we don't trust that God knows best. And so guess what we do? We go out and we try to make that thing happen. We become impatient. So impatience, it, 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 it pre prevents us from trusting God. Be because uh, waiting can be hard. Waiting can be hard. Because God is not bound by our timetable. He, 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 he supersedes time. And so during that time of us waiting, a lot of times the enemy's going once again, the enemy's going to be whispering that, hey, he's not doing what, it, God's not working. This God stuff doesn't work. You still, you have this, 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 this situation that you're dealing with and you need to an answer right now. And so we get ahead of God and because we don't see the plan, his plan unfold, we try to make things happen. So it, it, it is, is, is challenging as it is sometimes to trust God, that's in fact what we're told to do. The scripture that we've we've looked at before in your Bibles, uh, Proverbs, the third chapter, verses uh, five and six. It reads this, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. When it comes down to it, let's just make this simple. We will either trust or we won't. Mm -hmm. Let's just make it simple. We will either trust or we won't. We will either, either acknowledge him or we won't. It, 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 when, I, when I look at this, this th there's no, there's no uh, in-between. When I read the scripture, it says to trust in the Lord with all your heart. We, we talked about that a couple weeks ago. All your heart, that's your whole being. That's everything in you. There's no half stepping. You either trust or you don't. Uh, uh, there's there, there's no, no half sitting, half standing. Right? You, you, you trust or you don't. You're either going to sit in the chair and, and it's going to hold you up or, or, or you're going to stand up. You're not going to sit, stand. You know, <laughs> who does that, right? You either trust or you don't. You either will or you won't. Right. It's just what it boils down to. Again, it's not easy to trust because of the barriers, the, the barriers and the distractions that we face. But trusting God is necessary. We have to trust God. So let's look at the beginning of verse six again. It says this, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. As kids, we were uh, taught that when we came into a room, uh, we, we, we were taught to acknowledge the folks that are in the room, acknowledge our elders. Because we're, we're, we're kids, right? And so we, you know, we, we were taught to speak, you know, acknowledge, acknowledge our, our elders, you know. Can just it, it would be considered rude if you come into the room and there's a whole bunch of folks in there and you just ignore everybody and, and, and take your seat like like they're supposed to to cater to you. That's that's rude. I mean, we can all agree that's rude. So you acknowledge you acknowledge people. That's just common courtesy. You acknowledge them, but acknowledge here is is referring to more than a casual greeting. It's referring to more than a casual greeting. Acknowledge means to know and understand a person, to have an intimate relationship with them, to know all about them, and to know their ways. It's more than just, hey, how you doing? And acknowledging, you know, uh, somebody. It, we, 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 we've, it, 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 we've got to have more than that casual experience with God. God wants us to have more than just a casual fly by the night experience with him where we just acknowledge him once a week. He wants us to have more than that. It, 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 it's, it, it's true 
that the more that you know someone, the more you have trustworthy experiences with them, and that means you will trust them more. But you got to get to know them. You got to get to know them so that so that that you all together can go through something. If you I mean just just talk about you know uh, a husband and, and, and wife relationship, right? As you're going through the trials and the, and the, the testings of life, you know that that's going to you, you all go through it together. That's going to help you uh, uh, solidify the bond that you you have, the the vows that you've made before God. When you go through things and, and you realize that, you know, uh, the wife realizes that she can count on the husband and the husband realizes she can, that he can count on his wife and, and they, they go through things together, together, then, then they begin to trust each other more. They know each other. Start to, to, to finish each other's sentences. They know each other. God wants us to, to know him like that. It's not just a casual uh, communication with him. That's not what he wants from us. It's not his desire. So when, as we go through things with someone and we encounter those trustworthy experiences with them and we determine that they're trustworthy, then it will be easier for us to trust in them. That's why I said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because you either will or you won't. But, but what I'm telling you to do is to try it. Try it. Try it. Start to, start to write down, you know, little things, big things, it doesn't matter. It's just start to write down, okay, God, he, he really worked it out this time. Yes, it was little to, to, to the people who are who are observing me, but it's another it's another memory stone that I have to the goodness of God. Yep. If we don't take time to get to know God, you will have a limited view of him at best and a distorted view of him at worst. If you don't take time to get to know him, our view about him will be limited or distorted. Either view produces a lack of trust. So a limited view of God. A limited view of God causes us to level off at some point. We can only go as far as the limits we set in our mind. You can only go so far. And what we're really saying when we have a limited view of God is that we don't trust him to take care of the really big things. And so if we don't trust him to take it, you know, oh, I, I can't, I, the Holy Spirit's putting on our heart, you need to go over here or you need to do that. Oh, I can't do that. That's, that's big. <laughs> that's, I, I, God, are you sure you're going to use me to do that? Well, you have a limited view of the God that you serve. God that we serve is a big God who, 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 who orchestrates the entire universe and, 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 and sets it in motion and keeps it, keeps it first. The, 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 the universe had stopped working. Not one time. Not one time. Has the sun gone on strike? Not one time. Just it, 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 he, 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 can, he can control that. He can orchestrate the, the, the world that we live in. Guess what? He can handle whatever he tells you to do. He can handle the problems that we're in. If he says to go do this grand thing for him so he gets the glory, guess what he's going to do? He's going to equip you to do it. But if we have a limited view of the power of God to operate in our lives, then we'll, we'll level off. We'll only go so far. You remain comfortable. You remain comfortable. So limited view 
that 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 really tells that that's telling God, look, I I don't know about that. I I, I don't I you know I can't I don't trust that you can handle the big things that you're you're you you're wanting us to do. Or you it, it can it, it can be a problem that you're dealing with. And this is a big problem, and you know I got deadlines, and I have bills, and I have all of this, and 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 you 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 you. You're giving it to God, and God, I need help with this, and I need you to, to, to help me out and, and all this stuff, but it doesn't seem like God is working. And so guess what we do? We try to handle it ourselves. You know what that is? That's leaning to your own understanding. The very thing that the Bible tells us not to do. We're leaning and trusting in our own understanding because God is not, he's not moving as fast as we think that he should move. Well, what really you have is a limited view of him. You have a limited view of him. A distorted view of God causes us to become discouraged when the thing that we thought should happen doesn't happen. The thing that we thought should happen, it doesn't happen. And so we, we, we think that, that God doesn't love us. God isn't working. <laughs> God doesn't, he, he's not working it out for our good. That's a distorted view of God. Listen, make no mistake, that does not mean that it's going to be easy all the time. Because God can use the trials and the troubles that you go through to make you better and not bitter. He can use the trials that, that you go through to teach you something that's going to help you on the next level. So it's not mean, that doesn't mean that you won't have problems, but if you have a distorted view of God while you're dealing with your problems, you're the enemy, because the enemy's going to continue to whisper. You're not good enough. You don't deserve. You know, God isn't paying attention to you. The enemy's going to, he's, he's going to continue to whisper that in our minds, in our hearts. And if you believe it, then your view of God becomes distorted. And when that happens, when that happens, that's when discouragement sets in. Listen, it, 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 in case nobody ever told you, I want you to hear it at least once in your life. God loves you. God loves you. He loves you. Even, even when, time, when, when times are, are, are tough and hard, God loves you. You've got to take that, know that, Understand that about him, that's that's a part of his ways. God is love. That's who he is. Yes. And that love that he has, that, that he's not changing, that he won't change that love that he has, that's that's for you. So you can never say you didn't know, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never say you didn't know. So, so let, let's not have a distorted view of God. <clears throat> let's not have a distorted view of him. <clears throat> if we become satisfied with the casual greeting, the casual acknowledgement of God, we, we do a disservice to, to both God and ourselves. But a lot of people, they, they, they become satisfied with the, the, just the casual greeting. You know, you show, you, you walk into a room, hey, hey everybody, how y'all doing? And then that's just, it's just a casual acknowledgement. We can't become satisfied with that. If you become satisfied with that, you'll never get to the point where the Bible tells you to trust in the Lord with all your heart. You won't get to that point if you're satisfied with the casual, the, just the casual greeting the casual meeting up with God. I'm just going to come on Sundays and, and you know, perhaps Wednesday or Thursday, whenever you have your, your, your whatever it is that you're doing. If you have just that casual encounter with God, you're not going to grow like you want to. And you won't get to the point, I don't want to say you won't, that's like absolute. Let me modify that. It may take you longer than you, you need to. You know, like how you know you have to take a test in school, and you don't really study for the test. And so, guess what you do? You fail the test, right? And so you have to take it over again. It's not that you might, you may 
It's not that you're not going to pass the test ever, but it's just going to prolong you getting to the next level. It's just a, it's the same thing. If we have a casual meeting up with God and we don't acknowledge him, we don't get to know him, it's just going to prolong us being at a certain spot, a certain level. And there's some, if we remain in certain places, I'm not guarantee you're not going to be happy with that. You know why you're not going to be happy with that? It's because God is wanting you to come up. He's wanting to do more in your life, and he's not going to allow you to be satisfied with where you are. He's going to put more in you. He's going to have, he's going to, he's going to have more for you to do. And so you're not going to be happy with that. But we have to do something. We've got to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. We've got to lead not to our own understanding, acknowledging him, knowing that he will direct our path. But that's something that we have to do. You either will or you won't. You do or you don't. That's what it boils down to. It's not just, it's not just, like, hey, God, how you doing? It's me. Showed up today. And then that's it. You have to know him, acknowledge him. Trust in him. Something for us to do. Here's why we should acknowledge God. I want to look at an example. Uh, quickly look at an example found in Joshua the ninth chapter. So in this in this particular verse, in this particular chapter, there was six different. There were kings from six different regions that combined their armies to fight against Joshua and the Israelites. But the people of Gibeon had something else in mind. Instead of joining the the other kings in the other region. They have something else in mind. They were going to use deception instead of fighting. So let's look at what verse 3 says. This is what happens when this is this is this is why we should acknowledge God. Okay, I want, I want to give you an example of this. Verse 3 says, But when the people of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and I, uh, Ai, they resorted to deception to save themselves. They sent ambassadors to Joshua, loading their donkeys with weathered saddlebags, uh, saddlebags, and old, pitched, uh, old patched wineskins. They put on worn-out, patched sandals and ragged clothes. And the bread, and the bread they took with them was dry and moldy. When they arrived at the camp of Israel at Gilgal. They told Joshua and the men of Israel, we have come from a distant land to ask you to make a peace treaty with us. Verse 7 says, the Israelites replied to these Hivites, how do we know, how do we know you don't live nearby? For if you do, we cannot make a treaty with you. So here's what's going on. The Bible tells us that God instructed the Israelites, when they were going to the promised land, to don't make any treaties with the inhabitants of the land. They were to destroy them. They were to get them out. There's a reason for that. And that's, that's, that's something you know, we can dive into a little later. There's a reason. God wanted them to, to everybody that's in the land, you've got to get rid of. One of the reasons, just really, really quick, one of the reasons why he wanted them to, 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 to get out of the land, he needed them to, to get out of the land, is because if they remained in the land, if those inhabitants remained in the land, then they would persuade, persuade the, the, the children of Israel to serve other gods. That's what happens when we allow sin in our lives. But we, we, we're in uh, company, we were in constant company with people that are, are, are doing things that are contrary to the word of God. If you don't deal with it, if you don't make changes, then guess what's going to happen? You might be influenced to do the things that they're doing. Yeah. Because here's the thing, the reality is, is, I know it's like a long rabbit trail now at this point, but the reality is, is that you will influence or you will be influenced. Yes. It's just how it is. And so God says that you need to, don't make a treaty with them. Drive them out of the land. And so, look at verse 7 again. How do we know, how do we know you don't live nearby? The Israelites had the right question, but asked the wrong person. 
they have the right question. How do we know that you don't live nearby? But they're asking the, they're asking the people that live near that, that are claiming to live nearby. It's the right question. But it's just, it's just going to the wrong person. We, 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 we do the same thing. Yeah, I knew that I was gonna there has to be a parallel, right? Because we, we we do the same thing. We have the right question. Lord, when, when should I do this? Lord, what 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 it's a, it's a valid question. It's a it's a good question. It's a good question. But if we direct valid questions, good questions to somebody other than God, the one who has the plan, the one who knows everything, and the one who can steer us into the right direction if we go to anybody else, then you stand the chance of being deceived. Right question, wrong person. So, drop, drop down to verse 14. It says, so the Israelites examined their food, but did not consult the Lord. <laughs> Great questions need to be, they need to be given to God so that he can give us the answer so that we can stay in his will. But look at what they did. Remember, keep in mind, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your past. Lean not to your own understanding, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 14 says that they, they, they took the bread. They, they examined it themselves. But they didn't consult God. They were trusting and leaning on their own understanding. You can be deceived. You can be deceived. Verse 15. Then Joshua made a peace treaty with them and guaranteed, guaranteed their safety. The leaders of the community ratified their agreement with a binding oath. Three days after making the treaty, they learned that these people actually lived nearby. Have they consulted God first? acknowledged him knowing that God would give them the right answer, then God would have uh, alerted Joshua and the elders of the deception of these, these people. These people were standing right in front of them, lying. They were lying, just, just deceiving. Listen, dry and moldy bread may fool me and you, but it will never fool God. Now, it looks like they've been traveling. They had holy jeans on, you know, poles in their sandals, and they just looked like they were they were rough from the long journey. They had the dry, moldy bread to prove it. Dry moldiness, it, it, it fools us, but it would never fool God. See, that's why we need God. Because people will do things, say things, and act a certain way, and they can fool us. But the Holy Spirit will never be fooled. Verse 18. But the Israelites did not attack the towns. For the Israelite leaders had made a vow to them in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. The people of Israel grumbled against their leaders because of the treaty. Verse 19, but the, Israel, but the leaders replied, since we have sworn an oath in the presence of the Lord, the God of Israel, we cannot touch them. They were bound by the treaty that they made without consulting God. You know, <laughs> they, 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 they made this in haste and they couldn't attack them. Listen. They were forced to live with their decisions. You know, this is something that we don't like to talk about. You know, uh, I don't like to talk about it. I don't like it even. Say you do something. You do something. And it's contrary to the word of God. And you feel bad about it. You repent from it. Guess what you have? You have forgiveness. 
you have the fact that 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 God will cleanse you from from all the uh, he'll, he'll cleanse you from your sin. He doesn't remember it when you repent from it, so you have forgiveness. But you might have consequences. You might have consequences. They 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 were still conquer. Con they still went on went on and conquered the land, but they have consequences for not consulting God. They have consequences. And remember, God wanted them to drive the people of the land out so that they wouldn't be uh, uh, tempted with their gods to serve other gods. They were forced to live with their decision. They were forced to live with their decision. That's like us, you know, today. You may be living with the consequences of the decisions that you made. That does not mean that you're not forgiven. Don't let anybody condemn you because there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Just because there's no condemnation doesn't mean that there's no consequences. You may be living with that. But I still want you to be encouraged because God can get you even through that. When you remember verses like what I, like I just said, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. You, 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 you may have decided, made the wrong decision. You may not have trusted God like you should have. But even that's okay. When we turn from it, we understand that God is, in, okay, Lord, I, I'm not trusting you in this area like I, like I need to. That's a form of acknowledging him. That's knowing God will forgive you when you repent. So, Lord, I, 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 I repent for, for, for not trusting you as I should. And guess what he'll do? First John 1 and 9. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God can still get the glory out of your life even when you make mistakes and have shortcomings. They made a mistake because they didn't consult God. They made a mistake because they were they were leading to their own understanding. That's a mistake. But God can supersede even that mistake. He stands ready for, to forgive us for trusting in our own ways, for trusting in our own ability and not his way. So I just want to leave with you, decide today to trust and obey God and acknowledge Him with your whole heart in every situation, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what you're going through. Amen.